Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you recall in the last snake tutorial, what we got to was we now have a snake that when it picks up the food, we can tell the snake that it's growing and it spawns in a new piece of food somewhere else in the screen uh, within the grid boundaries and within the background. So in this episode, what we're gonna do is we're gonna implement that so that when you hit the screen, it actually kills you. And then we're also going to implement the growing of the snake so that when you pick up the food, you actually grow. So let's start with the boundaries. So if the snake hits one of the edges of the screen, we want it to die. What we can do is we can just simply add in a public Boolean intersecting with screen boundaries. It's a mouthful, but it works, right? <laughs> okay. And then we'll just take in the rectangle and this is the head. So how do we know if it's intersecting with the boundaries? Well, the head's X is greater than the right X of the boundary. The head's Y is less than the top Y or the head's Y is greater than the head's Y plus the height is greater than the bottom Y or the head's X plus the width is greater than the right boundary. So basically the same thing we did up here to check if it's intersecting with food, but with the, bound, the screen boundaries instead. So let's implement that real quick. The snake's actually gonna need a reference to the background as well. So we'll pass it in right up here too. So we'll say rectangle and this will be the background. And then we'll add in public rectangle background up here. And we will just say this dot background equals background. And then we will go up here to the game scene and we're gonna get an error here now. And then we will pass in the, back, the foreground just like we did with the food and we have an error in here, and that's because we're not returning a balloon right here. So let's just code that up real quick. We basically just want to return whether the head's X is less than the background's X, or the head's X plus the head's width is greater than the background's X plus the background's width or the head's Y is less than the background's Y, or the head's Y plus the head's height is greater than the background's Y plus the background's height. And let me fix this real quick. There we go. And we're actually gonna wanna make these less than or equal to because we do wanna check if it's right on the boundary as well. So just switch all those real quick. And then instead of like adding, like checking for that in here too, we can just check for it in here. Cause if it's intersecting with the self, we want to change it. If it's intersecting with the screen boundaries, we also want to change it. So we'll say return intersecting with itself or intersecting with the screen boundaries. And then we'll pass it the head right into. So let's see if this works. Hopefully we should hit one of the screen boundaries and it takes us back. We go up. But if you notice, we have that same one-off error where we are getting it one too early. So let's change this instead of less than or equal to. Let's see if this fixes it real quick. And then when we run this, it works perfectly now. So we're just one off and that was because, and so that really shows the importance too of those greater than or equal to. You really have to know what you're testing for because something as simple as just checking whether it's equal to can mean you're winning or you're losing when you shouldn't be. So it's just important. Next thing we wanna implement real quick is to grow whenever you grab the food. So let's go into our grow method, which we already have sort of outlined here and it's already working and everything. Um, we're going to need the direction we're traveling in, which we have side of direction. And then we're basically going to want to append a new rectangle to the tail of the array in the direction that we are traveling in. So kind of complex. Um, and let's actually do this because this is going to, uh, I want to do it. So you'll see this bug that I'm going to mention in a second, and I'm going to give you a way that you can fix it. So let's go into the snake class one more time. And then inside of this grow method, we're going to need a new X. We're going to need a new Y. And this is going to be very similar to this up here, which is just determining how to move the head forwards, except we're going backwards. So we're actually going to copy this and paste it down here. 
And then instead of uh, going this way, and when we go right, we want it to go left one. And we when we go uh, left, we want to go right one. So basically just the reverse because we're putting it behind it now. And we actually want this to be the tail. So let's copy and paste this all the way through here. And then we will just switch the signs on each of these. And this should give us an X and a Y that is one behind the tail of the current direction. So we'll say rectangle new body piece equals new rectangle and we will give it the body width, the body height, the new X and the new Y. Okay, and then we'll just say tail equals the tail minus one mod the body dot length to make sure we remain within those bounds. And then we'll just say body tail equals the new body piece. So we're just appending that to the array. So if we run this and we pick up a piece of food, it should, food, it should work perfectly fine if I can play this. And so pick it up and we got a really weird glitch. So let's see what the heck that's all about and fix that real quick. Okay, and the mistake is right here. I think I've done this before too. Should be new X, new Y, then the body width and the body height. Let's do that one more time because that was giving some very strange results, which we shouldn't have been getting. There we go. And if you notice, when we pick up the food, it grows one longer, which is exactly what we want it to do. And that looks pretty good to me. If you do notice though, one of the things that is happening when we pick up the new piece of food, notice which direction the tail gets appended on. So if I'm going down and then I go like that, you'll notice that the tail gets appended kind of weird. And that's because of the way we code it, we code it with the current direction, not the direction that that piece of the snake's tail is in. Uh, this will be uh, clearly illustrated when we decrease the size of the snake. So let's go down here and then start it off with three instead of 10. And then we'll hit play one more time. And so notice where the tail gets appended. So there it looked fine. But then did you did you see that it gets appended opposite to the direction we're currently going, which is not what you would want. So I'm not going to go over how to do this because this is something that I want you to try and solve for yourself, sort of like a homework, just to make sure you really understand all this. So here's a hint on what I would do. I would attach the direction to each piece of the body and then let each piece of the body determine what direction it's going. So I would add an extra parameter to rectangle uh, right here. And then I would call it the direction. And then I would use this to determine which direction you should append that last piece of the snake on opposite to the last part of the tail. So I would definitely say, give that a try. See if you can get that done. Shouldn't be too difficult. And then one last thing, there's one other bug with this. If we hit play one more time, if you hit down then right or down then left very quickly, there we go. You'll notice that you die. So what's happening there? Well, if we go back into our snake class and whenever we change the direction, we notice, so if we go up here to, to change direction, we set the direction and make sure that they're not running into themselves just by checking right against left. But what we don't check is what if they hit the down and then the left really fast? What's gonna happen is it's gonna switch to down, but we haven't quite switched directions over here yet because we haven't hit that next frame and that's gonna go left and it's gonna say, oh, that's okay. And then it's gonna let them do that. What I would suggest doing for this is storing the direction they want to turn so, or the direction they're currently going and then the previous direction. And then using those two things, you should be able to stop this bug from happening as well. But other than that, this covers it for Snake. I hope you guys enjoyed this. In the next series, what we're going to be going over is another game that I'm currently working on. And I think you guys know this game. So this is Geometry Dash. Here's a little sneak peek real quick of what that looks like. So if I go into here, uh, you can see I have a little level uh, being formatted and stuff. And it's actually saving these levels as well. So you have this level editor that you can pick up the different blocks and place them. And then if I hit F1, it will save that. And I restart it and you'll notice that all the changes were saved. So this is really cool. This sort of gets into uh, more of an actual game engine and this will be really fun to work on. And I think you guys will enjoy this. 
Hopefully you enjoyed this series. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and then stay tuned for this next series when we go to create Geometry Dash. Okay, thanks guys. I'll see you next time.